Hi Chad, yes, we are going to be doing a full speedrun today. I might reset if... I will reset pre-DRC. Because if manual super soon goes bad, again, I reset. And if I lose storage in Dragon Roost, it's actually guaranteed reset. So we will do, we will finish our run today and it will be a no hey reset guys, once we are past Sploosh Kaboom. You know you could... See, I still got it, chat. This is how we do it. Still got it. I'm glad that switching from daily exercising to occasional night exercise. I mean, <coughs> uh, I'm glad that the long break hasn't affected our manual super swim skills. All right, let's start this in three, two. Wait. Let's start this in three, two, one, and go. Let's go! Let's see if we can get the first attempt going of the day or if we're gonna have to reset. Here we go. Thank you! Three. I will watch the lore cutscene one more time, otherwise we're skipping it, because I'm not sitting through four minutes every time we mess up annual super soon chat. You will get it one more time. Let's see if we can get manual super swim second try. And if not, we are skipping the lore though next time. I'm not sitting through it again. Sorry, chat. You have to hope that we get it right now. This is good. I think I have enough speed, but I'm gonna pause for a little bit more just to be on the safe side. Let's see if I have enough speed. Let's try it. I don't wanna risk it. I'm gonna save it. Hold on. It'd still be faster than a buffered one. Okay, I think this is enough. Target too much. I forgot I wasn't zoomed out all the way on my camera, so it does not need as much to do the cancel the speed. Oh, that hurts. Chat, I'm sorry. No more lore. That was it. That was the end of the lore, chat. That is so much speed. That has to be enough speed. I'm gonna drown. I panicked and did the wrong one. Chad, do you remember before I started runs today, I said I practiced everything except for manual super swim and kaboom. Kaboom was because of the hype, but, sploosh kaboom, but manual super swim was because I was like, hey, I don't want to tire up my arm. Maybe that was a slight mistake, but it's okay. We, we got it there. So now we just have to do that, but again. We did it! All right. As long as we get past Dragon Roost, we have a guaranteed run now. Uh, if I mess up Dragon Roost, it would be bad because basically my saves are messed up right now, so I can't just like make a safety save. But as long as we don't choke the next part, we're good. We have a run going. This is actually sort of a new thing. So before we had to get up a sword here and we had to like crush this barricade uh, and you had to rely on luck. But there's sort of a new trick here. Let me show you and then let me explain the little fun history about this trick. I need a wind waker. 
Damn. So, you can actually get out of bounds on top of that cliff without using any glitches by using very precise movement to skip that barricade. And you can, like, walk out of bounds if you just want to do it for fun. So that's something that you have, I promise you, you have probably never seen before. And you might be like, oh, that's a cool new skip. Well, let me tell you the really funny story behind this, because I just found out about this. So I started speedrunning Wind Waker in 2013, right? So I would say I know a good amount about this game. Well, I didn't know about that trick. You might be like, well, of course, Linkus. It was just implemented and found. Well, Mini technically just discovered it a few months ago, but he didn't actually discover it. He rediscovered it. That glitch was found by an old uh, community member by the name of Kazooie. If you are a really old school person, you know about that glitch hunter Kazooie. That glitch is 14 years old. So, like, there is a 14 year old video on YouTube of finding that glitch by a user named Kazooie. 17, sorry, 17. 17 years old video. Super, like, one of the oldest glitch videos ever found. Yeah, I almost couldn't believe it until Mini sent me the video. And it was uploaded on November 21st, 2006. It is literally 2006. Can you believe that a new a, a glitch that would actually end up being useful in 2024 would be found in 2006? I think it's so cool. To be honest though, Linkus, 2006 was like the last time Twilight Princess got a speeder in development. <laughs> so it's not too bad. <laughs> You're kind of true though. I can't remember. I think 2009 was the last major discovery, right? I think it was 2009. I could be wrong. It's a long ass time ago. All right. If in case you haven't seen this next trick coming up, this is one of my favorite tricks. Be ready, okay? So we just got the telescope. So we're supposed to like watch a bunch of cutscenes and go and save Tetra and blah, blah, blah. We're not going to do any of that, okay? This is what we're going to do. We're going to change the wind upright. Then I'm going to go ahead and go in this corner. Set up this angle. And then jump and fly off into the distance. And we're going to stand in the air, open an invisible door, and we are now in the pirate ship. <laughs> so the pirate ship is actually on the GameCube version, always loaded and located in the edge of the coordinate of the outside coordinate. But it's made invisible, but it's still loaded on the GameCube version. And if you watch the cutscenes, all it does is it just loads the textures. The pirate ship itself is already loaded. So, if you know exactly where it is, and you have the deke leaf, you can set the wind in the correct location, have a perfect angle, and then just leaf barely, it's very close, all the way to the pirate ship, and then you can just enter the door, and this will then take you to Spoils Bag, and basically skip the end of the outset quests, and take you straight to Forsaken Fortress. Yep, yep. What? I love the ropes. I love the ropes. No, I was just doing the timing of the, the, the HD version. This may be the Pega. Because the ropes behave very differently between the two versions. I love you more. Okay. By the way, chat, we are two hours into the run right now and about three hours into the stream. So I am curious. How does it feel? Like now when like the oh my god initial hype of the notification went through. How does it feel? How does the run feel? Good? I'm glad. This is one of the most annoying and hard parts of Hundo. These submarines. I got the first one. So it might look like it's just a ledge grab, but um, they actually added invisible thingies to make it not possible to grab these ledges in the submarines on the on both versions actually so on hd it doesn't matter because you can just uh item slide but basically you can't be in a normal height and grab the ledge you have to either have like an angle or you need to be and you also need to be either be really far above the ledge or below the ledge it's really strange how it works this is one of the more annoying storages okay i got it but it will be pitch black but that's technically still fine
don't see anything. So right now, I have chest storage active while I am super swimming. So I'm going to use that to go over here. I'm going to get a bunch of more speed and airy fills by super swimming into Windfall. And we're going to go to Forsaken Fortress. Cancel storage. And because we have... And because we have chest storage enabled now... We can climb these walls. And hello, Helmrock. <laughs> chest storage is just worse ISG. Yeah, right. In my head, I'm like, oh boy, we're about to go and beat the game. Because I'm so used to any percent. And then I look over at my splits and I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> What's my expected time for this run? Eh, faster than slow, but slower than fast. The world record for this category is about six hours. My best time is a 6.34 when I was running the game a lot. So honestly, for a first run back, no reset, I'm hoping I will get under seven hours, which I think is quite viable. But yeah, that's my goal. My goal is under seven hours for our first run. So hopefully sub seven. That's why I said enjoy the eight hour stream today, guys. <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna be here for uh, like four or five more hours. Nice, second try, we'll take those. We have to come back for this bird later, by the way, because he does give you a heart container. But I can't kill him right now because I don't have the uh, Skull Hammer and that is required to deal damage to Helmrock. So you skip him the first time and then you have to come back a second time. But this route still saves an enormous amount of time. To keep a very long and complicated explanation shorter, you have to have the Master Sword to deal damage to Phantom Ganon. And Phantom Ganon gives you the Skull Hammer. So that means that your only two options to go through this section is to either go down to Hyrule after Tower of the Gods or come back here later by skipping him now. Got it. All right, second try, not too bad. We take those. Let's not fail this and crash the game. With a new setup, we should have this in the bag. Okay, got the storage. Nice. Okay. Okay, here we go. Got it. All right. I love this new setup. It makes this go from, oh boy, we're going to crash the game half of the time to <laughs> we actually have a consistency for it. So what happened right there is basically I entered the loading zone and I got crushed by the ceiling. So I voided out at the same frame. That, do that makes it so that the game doesn't attempt to play the cutscene again, which normally should happen. Instead, it puts me through the loading zone, but in a, hey, I just voided out and standing back up stage, which skips the cutscene. That means I avoid crashing from coming here a second time. And now we can actually fight Helmrod. Yeah, so by getting storage to clip into the uh, room during the fight, we can fight him really quickly. We don't have to rely on Helmrock RNG like the HD version. All right. And now the most exciting part of the run is coming up, auction. So if you don't know how auction works, there are four items in the auction. 
No, it's not auction. It's it's auction. <laughs> anyway, so there's four items in the auction. There's two mappas, one heart piece, and one joy pendant. Every item is an equal amount of chance of appearing, meaning right now there's a 75% chance to get an item I want and a 25% chance to give me the joy pendant. Every time I get the joy pendant, I will lose 25 seconds. So first item, pretty good. All right, second item. Will we get a mappa, a heart piece, or a joy pendant? This is it. Will we get on the first attempt, which is what the prediction is for, a joy pendant or a heart piece? Let's find out. Will we get perfect RNG? And we actually got perfect RNG on the auction. No joy pendant today. Believers win. Never doubt the RNG. Can I say, by the way, I'm gonna hate these splits. Oh my god, am I gonna hate these splits. First splits on back to the category. And I'm forever losing time on this now. I am forever gonna lose time to this. Why on my first no reset run do we get perfect RNG on auction? Yeah, exactly. Have fun. By the way, if you're wondering, I don't want to go ahead and actually get medley. So I'm doing this obscure setup to basically clip out of bounds. This trick is actually more precise than barrier skip. It is the most precise. I think it's the most precise clip we have in the entire run. It's float point perfect. Yeah, if you know video games or development at all, you will understand why it's so precise. <laughs> if you hear flo float point perfect. Okay, this should be it. Got it. All right. Whew. This is not my traditional D rust run because I actually did do practice before this run with a run through offline. Well, partial run through offline. It's more like a comeback run. What? How did he jump? Oh God! Thank you. Hail and Hold on, I can save Since this. you don't have sounds, we'll help you. Hi it's gonna be slow, but I can dum save dum this. Hi -la -la. I've never had him not to jump there before. I'm so confused. What's my forest water on? Four minutes. Oh man, I'm quite scared about my forest water. I think I might have to reroute it. It is gonna be quite tight. <sighs> okay. Okay, two minutes and 22 seconds. Time for the best music in the game. I hope I can get a good one cycle to try and save some of the time back on the 222. At least it's not that big of a detour. Because I think when I, you know, you know when I do the save warp on Mother and Child Isle, I think I could just like get storage, go to Star Isle. And then save warp in the water if I don't make it. I'm I got I want to make it work though. Okay, I'm not gonna dupe until it's no. I'm just gonna dupe. I can't make it. It's one minute. Oh, you can dupe with water from the ocean? Okay, okay, oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, you can dupe with water from the ocean? Okay. Oh my god. Okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. <laughs> if you duplicate a bottle's item over the forest water before it runs out, the game will not automatically update the islands you've already been to to remove the grown trees. As long as you never go back to those islands. 
That means that you can split up water. You, that means you can split up the uh, forest water into two segments. So you do half of them now, duplicate soup over the water, and then you basically do that again. I messed up the, the, the bottle glitch right there, which is why I said, oh no. However, thankfully, it seems like you can do it with normal water as well. Okay, let's get some water. Okay, and the glitch has been performed. We're good. Okay, anyways, we did it, Chad. We saved it. The run still lives. How does the dupe work? You press the button for the bottle on the same frame that you pause the game. So press pause and bottle on the same time, then, uh, then equip something over the bottle so it's no longer equipped into your inventory. Because then the game can't update the bottle to be half drank. So. Is it possible to travel at such great speeds you could clip through the submarine? Clip through it? Probably not. Swim th swim through it before it's loaded would be possible. If you have that much speed, if you have that much speed that you're talking about, you would just go through it before it even had time to load into the game. So you kind of just like where it should be. But once it's loaded, no, you probably just sploosh. You wouldn't just swim right through it. Wait. Shit. This is supposed to be the 13th heart piece. I missed the heart piece. I need to check my VOD. Hold on. Okay, I was already one behind at Star Isle. Okay, I did have the correct amount of diamond step. Wait, did I do 38? Found it. Okay, we forgot to salvage 38. Okay, that's that's fine then. Okay, we figured it out. Okay, sorry. I had to make sure I know which one it was. Okay, that's fine. It's not too out of the way. That's fine. All right, Chad, it's time. It's time. It's the moment you all have been waiting for. Orca 500 hits. Arguably the best split in the game. If I may say so myself. I forgot how much more aggressive he is in the game conversion. I have lost the speedrun on world record pace at 499 here before, actually, if you are curious. Oops, early split. This is the last Orca you will see of the day. So say goodbye to Orca. He's so sad that you're leaving him, Chad. He can't believe you're gonna leave him like this. That is true. I got so embarrassed when we were at Olive Garden. I literally ran out of Olive Garden and sat in the car alone for 15 minutes, waiting for Maisie and Oliver to finish their meal inside, or their, their dessert inside of Olive Garden. So we were out at Olive Garden. It was pretty late, and I wanted to go to a store, and the store was going to close at 10 p.m., and it was like 9.25. We were getting ready to leave, and then the people at Olive Garden said, oh yeah, by the way, what did you want for your dessert? And I forgot, because it's Macy's birthday, she's gonna get a free dessert. So Macy said the tiramisu. And you know, I'm like, okay, at least that's a fast thing. It's in the fridge, right? It's just gonna basically come out of the fridge or freezer and you know, it's done, right? This is gonna be fast, easy clap, we'll still make it, right? Because it's like a 10 minute drive. And then a couple of minutes go by, a couple of more minutes go by, and because I'm like, bruh, because, you know, I want to make this time, right? Like, I want to make the time. And I'm starting to just go, bruh. She's, like, across a walkway at another table. And I say to Maisie and Oliver, how long does it take to take some tiramisu out of the fridge? And then she proceeds to turn around. She proceeds to turn around. 
and say, the tiramisu may take a few minutes. Is that okay? And when she said that, she wa I, we said, of course. And then I looked at Maisie and I said, Maisie, I want to leave. And she said, but we haven't gotten our dessert. And I said, don't care, it's free. Let's go without the dessert. And she goes, I'm not going without the dessert. And I said, then I'm going to the car. And, and then I stood up and I walked to the car and I sat there in shame for the next 15, 20 minutes, for the next 15 minutes alone, waiting for them to get their tiramisu so then they could eat it. So I was sitting there alone in the car because I couldn't stand facing that waitress again because I felt so embarrassed because I, it wasn't that her service was bad. I complained because I was sad they were going to miss our 10 p.m., right? But I couldn't stand seeing the waiter again because I felt so embarrassed. I don't know, man. It was a really bad experience. It was probably one of the worst experiences I've ever had in my life. Copium. Okay, uh... We're actually pretty close to the end. Holy shit, I've been talking. I kind of forgot about the run. But man, we have like six or seven islands left. We're almost done. Yay! One thing I really don't like about Wind Waker 8, Wind Waker on the GameCube version for Hundo, I will say though, I hate seven hour speedruns. But I don't mind when it's under six hours. There's something about around the six hour mark that makes it feel too long. But once the speedrun is six hours, it's manageable because when then it's like, okay, I'm starting to get tired at the five hour mark. But it's like, oh, but I have less than an hour left. And then you just kind of get the second wind and you push through. So it's this weird thing about Wind Waker on the GameCube for Hundo, where like, right now I hate it because I think it's too long. But I know that if I do more runs, then by doing more runs, I will get faster and better and I will get down to the time I want where I don't feel like exhausted from the run. Yeah. All right, this is the, the heart we forgot. I do not remember what the treasure chart number was. Uh, hopefully by standing here in the middle, I'll see the box. I don't remember. Oh yeah, I think it was 30. No, wait, it can't have been 30. Wait. God damn it, I went to the wrong one. It was 3i for 38. Wait, isn't 3i literally this one? Oh no. Oh, three eyes this one. Okay, I can super zoom to that. I definitely won't make this mistake again next round, so it's fine. It's just part of the learning curve. I made a silly mistake. Won't do it again. All right. Oh, we did it. That's it. We can go to Forsaken Fortress, get the less harpies, and beat the game. Yay. Wait, let me make sure I got all the treasure charts too. 49. We did it. Okay. And 100%. That's it. That is 100% everything. That's all the hearts, all the treasures, all the items, all the upgrades, all everything. Sweet the game. All right, let's see if we can be the Swedish sniper. Here we go. Oh, I'm just gonna keep moving to the left. <laughs> not hit. Okay, not bad, but so close to perfect. I would say that was pretty good. Thank God there's no pop again and skip. They're technically, you can't, technically the optimal strat is to do PG skip. But the war record does not do it. And I have said to chat that unless I have to, I'm not doing it. Because I, 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 if it was down to me, I would ban it from 100%. I would literally ban it in a heartbeat. I've said for a long time, I would love to just add a rule to Hundo that says you have to beat all the bosses. Because the, the only thing that that would do is put into a rule that Puppet Ganon Skip is banned. I would vote for that in a heartbeat. Also, that was a sick shot. Oh, that was so close to being called. Still incredible shot. Not bad. All right. Time is coming up. And time. 
There it is, the super rusty Wind Waker 100% return run in 7 hours, 28 minutes, and 42 seconds. I'll do another one this week, probably not tomorrow. But what about maybe Wednesday? Maybe we'll do one on Wednesday.